Four years ago, Thomas was 27 and married for two months. His mother died when Thomas was five years old, and Thomas was raised by his father. When Thomas was seven years old, other children had a carefree childhood, and he often helped his father with the housework. Gradually, Thomas came of age and successfully entered the university, becoming the first local college student. Four years passed quickly, Thomas graduated with honors and found a good job. While working, Thomas met his wife, Amy. In the second half of 2002, Amy became pregnant. At that time, the family was very happy, but then the accident happened. Thomas was sick because he was tired and old for years. In order to treat his father, Thomas and his wife spent all their savings and became very poor. In order to survive, Thomas decided to go up the mountain to collect herbs, which were valuable at the time. One weekend afternoon, Thomas went up the mountain with his herb basket again and his tools. Soon Thomas was deep in the mountains. He was stopped in his earnest search for herbs. In front of him was a stout tree that split down the middle. Thomas assumed it was a natural formation, but was startled as he approached. Behind a bush, Thomas spotted a fluffy bear cub that looked like it had just been born. Where there would normally be cubs, there would be females especially if it looked like a bear den. The little bear lay motionless in its den, as if it had not eaten for a long time and was about to starve to death. After surveying his surroundings, Thomas noticed faint paw prints nearby that appeared to have been made a long time ago, indicating that the mother bear had not returned for a long time. To make sure, Thomas howled a few times like a wild animal, but heard no response indicating that the mother was really not nearby. So Thomas stopped being nervous. He looked at the little bear and wondered what he would do. When he got to the little bear, it kept howling. Thomas thought of his mother, who had died, so he felt sorry for the bear. Then Thomas finally made up his mind. He wanted to save the poor bear. Thomas took off his coat, wrapped the bear and put it in the medicine cabinet. Then he ran down the hill, trying to get out of there as fast as he could. He ran for more than two hours until he came to the bottom of the mountain. Then he looked back at the mountain and breathed a sigh of relief. He thought he was safe at last. Back home, Amy looked at a tired Thomas and asked him anxiously what had happened. Thomas shook his head and handed her the herb basket. Amy was shocked and asked aloud why he had brought home a bear. She said the mother bear would come to get even with them. Challenged by his wife, Thomas quickly explained what had happened to him on the mountain. Amy was surprised and didn't blame him. Instead, she thought he did the right thing. She said, let's keep the bear. At the time, it seemed simple, but it was really hard. Thomas and his wife had no experience at all. Fortunately, they were both highly educated so they knew that the bear was a mammal and needed breast milk, so they immediately went to prepare the milk. Soon Thomas was back with a bowl of milk. The one who smelled the milk howled and drank, looking hungry. Thomas and his wife took good care of the bear and treated it like family. Under their care, the bear grew up. During this time, the couple worried about whether the mother bear would return, and try to find the bear in the mountains. On another trip up the mountain to pick medicine, Thomas went to the spot where he had found the bear and found it deserted, suggesting that the female bear had never returned. At the time, Thomas was glad that he had brought the bear home, otherwise the consequences could not have been worse. He thought that since the mother bear had not returned, he would adopt the bear and return it to the woods when it was older, the bear then lived with the couple. One day, Thomas found some valuable herbs and decided to sell them. He thought that the income from the sale would sustain them for a while. 
The next day, Thomas was negotiating the price with the buyer when he received a call from the hospital, informing him that his father's condition had worsened. After hearing the news, Thomas rushed to the hospital with the herbs. The doctor told him that his father had no more than two years to live on the medication and asked him if he wanted to continue his treatment. At that point, Thomas chose to continue treatment. Although he had to spend a lot of money, he and his wife were willing to make the effort. After Thomas heard about the expensive medical bills, he felt desperate. Looking at Thomas with his eyes glazed over, Amy gently hugged him and told him that no matter what happened, they would face it together. She also told him that they could sell the house. Hearing his wife's comfort, Thomas burst into tears. Thomas worked several part-time jobs in addition to his job to treat his father. At that time, he continued to collect medicine. He almost died in search of expensive herbs. Amy, who was supposed to be on maternity leave, didn't take a break and kept working hard. At that time, the only fun for them was to go home and play with the bear. Three months later, Amy was about to give birth and Thomas was left to make his own money. But again, bad news came from the hospital. Thomas' father was getting worse again, which meant they needed more money. At that time, Amy wanted to put their house on the market, but Thomas refused. He thought he couldn't leave his wife, an unborn child without even a house. A week later, the hospital was urging them to pay or stop treating their father. When Thomas had no choice, a man Thomas knew came to him to discuss the matter. This man had approached Thomas many times before and wanted to buy the bear, but Thomas had already formed a bond with the bear, so he turned it down. He thought that when the bear grew up, he would release it into the wild, where it would belong. But the man heard that Thomas needed money for his father's medical treatment, so he wanted to buy the bear again. In the face of the hospital's urging and his father's suffering from illness, Thomas finally agreed to the man. One day, Thomas brought the bear to the exchange, only to learn that it was from the circus. As the bear was being caged and watched Thomas leave, it let out a whine. It couldn't understand why Thomas was sending it to that strange place and keeping it locked up. It wanted to go home. Faced with the bear's whining, Thomas came to the cage and apologized, and said there was nothing he could do because he had a problem he couldn't overcome. He said he would pick it up later. Thomas then walked away and the bear's whining brought him to tears again. After a quick trip to the hospital, Thomas was stunned when he arrived at the cashier's office because the money he had just sold the bear was gone. His backpack was cut open and his money was missing. He had been searching helplessly and then he could only cry in the empty road. At that time, he wanted to commit suicide, but he couldn't and even forgot to call the police. Passers-by looked at him, but no one came forward to help him. Faced with their indifference, Thomas could only ignore them. In the middle of the night, Thomas was found slumped on the side of the road by his wife, and they hugged and cried. In the end, Thomas' father died. No matter how hard life is, we must move on because our responsibilities are great. Three years later, a man in his thirties carried a little boy on his back. The man was Thomas. He was a father by then. That day, a zoo in Qinghai province put on a circus show for publicity. To fulfill his son's wish, Thomas took a day off from work to bring his son to the zoo. At that time, there were so many people that they sat down and waited for the show to begin. Then there were the lion walking in the ring of fire, the tiger walking on the tightrope and other performances. The animal's performance made everyone applaud warmly. Then a black bear came out with a bicycle and was ready to show off. The bear got on the bike and ran around the ring. Looking at the cute face of the black bear, everyone gave a warm applause. Thomas was silent as he thought of the bear. He had looked for it, but he had failed. While he was thinking, the noise broke out. 
he found others running and screaming. What was going on? As Thomas wondered, he realized that the bear, who had been performing on stage, had suddenly dropped its bike and was running towards him, but by then it was too late. Thomas unconsciously defended his son as the bear reached him. Thomas closed his eyes and braced himself for the attack. After a long time, Thomas opened his eyes and found the bear holding him. Looking excited, he asked if it was the bear. The black bear roared again when it heard his voice. Thomas slowly touched the bear and wept as he apologized and said he had not done what he had promised it. But he did not expect the bear to remember him. Everything has feelings. We are able to cherish anyone and anything with unfulfilled hopes and give them love and care. That's our story for today. Click and subscribe for more fun stories.